At the same time, exports of data to China are unexamined and, so far, free from legal challenges. That violates World Trade Organization agreements as an arbitrary and discriminatory data protection standard. It is a betrayal by a nominally allied jurisdiction. European court rulings that struck down prior data privacy frameworks were grounded not in constitutional law but in a treaty among European nations. If the EU accepted an international agreement that data may flow to the United States under a more reasonable standard than the one adopted by the court, that interpretation would be binding, at least as a gloss on the earlier treaty. The United States has never seriously pushed back against the EU, now is the time. An incoming president should ask for an immediate study of the implementation of Executive Order 14086 and suspend any provisions that unduly burden intelligence collection. At the same time, in negotiations with the Europeans, the United States should make clear that the continued sharing of intelligence with EU member states depends on successful resolution of this issue within the first two years of a president's term. It is time for a real solution, not the 30 years of stopgaps imposed by Brussels. President's Daily Brief, PDB An incoming conservative president should make clear what the president's daily brief is and is not. The PDB should be for the president specifically, with a much narrower distribution and addressing areas of strategic concern. During the transition, the future National Security Advisor, along with the DNI, should conduct a review of current PDB recipients and determine which should remain recipients when the president's term begins. Instead of being used as the statement of record for the agencies, the PDB often misses the areas of interest for presidents and their senior advisors. The president should want the PDB to focus on providing the information needed for the often imperfect and complex decisions that a president needs to make, which should always be based on the best intelligence that can be gathered. Where consensus and agreement are possible, an IC coordinated product is excellent, but insights provided by properly channeled dissent can lead a president to ask relevant questions of his DNI and IC. A future DNI determines the PDB briefer based on recommendations made by the Deputy Director of National Intelligence for Mission Integration, MI. Historically, briefers have come from the CIA, but a future president and DNI should consider a primary briefer or a rotation of briefers from other IC elements. Additionally, the entirety of the PDB staff and production should be located at ODNI. National Intelligence Council, NIC. The National Intelligence Council is the IC's premier analytic organization and includes more than a dozen national intelligence officers, NIOs, each of whom leads the IC's analysis within a regional, China, Russia, Iran, etc., or functional, cyber, counterproliferation, economics, etc., mission area. This includes authoring national intelligence estimates on major strategic issues with the entire IC, overseeing and deconflicting the annual analytic plans of each agency and weighing in on day-to-day -day major analytical issues, sometimes individually, for example, by writing the NICS strategic memos or providing detailed expert briefings to the president before major decisions. Historically part of the CIA, the NIC was reorganized into the ODNI as was the PDB. It retains the CIA's objective analytic culture and is staffed primarily with CIA officers, however, as many as 25% of its NIOs over the decades have come from academia or the private sector bringing in much-needed outside expertise to collate and understand intelligence with perspective and skills that are not necessarily nurtured within the IC. In recent years, there has been a greater emphasis on encouraging officers from other agencies particularly the DIA, NSA, and FBI to serve as NIOs or as their deputies. To encourage greater analytic independence and debate, the incoming administration should require that non-CIA officers comprise at least 50% of the NICS membership and that the first among equals NIC chairman is an outsider from one of the three major IC agencies with reporting responsibility to the PNI. Opening these senior analytic roles to the best analysts regardless of agency would also encourage the continued maturation of analytic coders and tradecraft at those agencies and give them an equal voice in interagency analytical disputes, which in turn would give the president access to the best thinking and a variety of sources and perspectives from across the entire IC rather than from the CIA alone. IC Chief Information Officer The Intelligence Community Chief Information Officer, ICHO, directs and oversees all aspects of the classified IT budget for all of the IC's 18 elements. As the DNI's principal advisor for technology, the ICHO must be well-versed in technology, acquisitions, operations, and intra-agency cooperation. To advance our technical prowess and simultaneously direct a bureaucracy that, left unchecked, will serve each element's own preferences. To ensure that procured and implemented technology and policy reflect the administration's agenda, the ICHO must have the support of the DNI and possess the ability to command cooperation between and promote interoperability across IC members. Because of the unique responsibilities entrusted to this position, Incumbency has seesawed between political appointees and career civilians, due to its congressionally capped salary, the position is often filled by an SES-level member administratively detailed to support the DNI. At times, the ICHO is incorrectly referred to as the ODNI CIO. By law, and to secure unbiased execution across all of the IC's 18 elements, 
the same individual may not serve as ICHO and OD and ICIO. They are two distinct positions. Critical areas in ICIT portfolio priorities for the ICHO include but are not limited to L. Transparent accounting and allocation of IT investments across the IC, including commercial cloud computing and storage, C2E. L. Recognized and uniform security access for people, systems, and capabilities to enable interoperability across IC elements. L. 5G 6G data transmission and network interoperability, which is vital to IC element operations. L. Artificial intelligence and machine learning. L. Quantum cryptography and post quantum encryption, PQE, and L. Cybersecurity infrastructure where bidden administration changes have realigned and reassigned management oversight and IT architecture responsibilities to NSA and DHS CISA, conflicting with ICHO delineated roles. An incoming administration should appoint the ICHO as a primary member of the DNI staff along with the ODNI General Counsel, IC Chief Financial Officer, and ODNI Chief Operating Officer. The President elect should require immediate reviews of the progress in implementing post quantum encryption at a minimum for IC and defense systems but preferably throughout the government. The President's National Security Memorandum. Specifying the goal of mitigating as much of the quantum risk as is feasible by 2035 49 needs to be revised in light of the magnitude of the threat. Accounting for the investment that will be needed to secure IT systems for national security should be a top priority. ODNI, CIA, and IC technology issues. In recent years, the IC has had a mandate from multiple administrations to advance technology needs for intelligence. Needs that have seen massive changes as a result of such threats as China's advancements in technology and data infrastructure. Many of the projects coming out of ODNI and CIA's Science and Technology Directorate, SNT, focus on expensive AI-driven open-source work, but there is likely duplication of effort in areas where the private sector and entrepreneurs are already making progress. The Intelligence Advanced Research Projects Activity, IRPA, and SNT should focus primarily on challenging technology problems. Avoiding duplication of what is already being done well in the private sector in such areas as practical defense cyber intelligence and artificial intelligence research would help to focus the agencies on the complex shadow tasks at hand while simultaneously freeing limited resources for advancement in other areas. President's Intelligence Advisory Board and PIAB Intelligence Oversight Board The President's Intelligence Advisory Board, PIAB, is charged with providing the President with an independent source of advice on the IC's effectiveness while offering insights into the IC's future plans. The board is meant to have access to all information needed to perform its functions and to have direct access to the president. The Intelligence Oversight Board is a standing committee within the PIAB. These entities should be tasked with giving independent, informed advice and opinion concerning major matters of national security focused on long-term, enduring issues central to advancing and protecting American interests. This should include taking a broader, deeper look at critical trends, developments, and their implications for U.S. national and economic security relying on unclassified and open-source information. The importance of space. With China developing increasingly capable space and counterspace technologies and Russia taking more aggressive action in space, space has emerged as the latest warfighting domain. In response, the DNI created the Office of the Space Executive, OSX, in 2018 as an experiment to promote greater integration of IC space activities without incurring excessive overhead. The DNI mandated greater collaboration across the enterprise without adding personnel, altering authorities, and increasing budgets. The space executive's design reflects the original design principles of the ODNI. The ODNI was explicitly not designed to be a departmental headquarters with command and control of the 18 agencies' vast bureaucracies. Rather, it was designed to be small and lightweight with a mission to coordinate and integrate the critical activities of the IC's 18 agencies without creating new bureaucracy. That goal should remain in force, and calls by outside entities or Congress to add new centers and layers should be rejected. The Office of the Space Executive has been recognized as an effective governance model and has spawned similar efforts, including the Election Threats Executive, Economic and Threat Finance Executive, and Cyber Executive. With this in mind, the following initiatives should be pursued. L. Expand collaboration with partners. For too many decades, the IC and DOD have acquired and operated satellites independently. To improve their ability to meet the threat posed by China and Russia, the IC and DOD should. 1. Explore new methods for better integrating our space assets. To examine the possibility of joint programs, and 3. Fully utilize unique Title 10 and Title 50 authorities to execute space defense, and offense, strategies jointly. Additionally, the IC should support building international alliances with like-minded partners beyond the Five Eyes intelligence-sharing nations. Increasingly, potential allied nations, and their commercial companies, are developing innovative space capabilities to augment and strengthen the U.S. space defense and intelligence posture. L. Refocus space-related intelligence collection. The IC has developed a space threats collection posture predicated on three assumptions. 
one the best information on developing space threats comes from collection against the adversary's military institutions on Earth. Two there should be a clear dividing line between DOD's intelligence activities and the IC's, and three only government developed exquisite capabilities can inform threat analysis and decision making effectively. Developments by our adversaries and the emergence of a vibrant commercial space marketplace over the past decade have rendered all three assumptions false and even dangerous. The IC must therefore refocus and invest in methods that will enable it to characterize accurately the threats that already exist in space, not just on the ground, break down barriers to information sharing and collaboration with the DOD, and embrace commercially derived capabilities that can be adapted to a national security mission all while emphasizing the need to protect critical supply chains and the cybersecurity needs that result from an increasingly government commercial low Earth orbit. Our nation's economic and national security depends on being able to advance America's leadership position in space, which is eroding in the face of increasing threats from adversaries and our own inaction. An unfinished experiment. The intelligence community, including specifically the role of the DNI and ODNI, is an unfinished experiment. The envisioned design principle was a conservative. 1. A small, network-centric model for enterprise coordination as opposed to a large monolithic bureaucracy like DHS. The ODNI, however, has reverted in some ways to a bureaucratic and hierarchical model characterized by limited effectiveness. Historically, the CIA has undercut the DNI and maintains primacy in the IC hierarchy, especially regarding the White House. An incoming conservative president can write the ship and return the IC governance model to first principles by using a limited but empowered leadership and coordination designed to serve the nation's intelligence and national security needs while reclaiming the public trust with fiscal responsibility, political neutrality, personnel accountability, technological prowess, and necessary human capital needed to counter the immense nation-state and asymmetrical threats facing our country. Authors note, the preparation of this chapter was a collective enterprise of individuals involved in the 2025 Presidential Transition Project. No particular policy statement, reform recommendation, or other view expressed herein should be attributed to any individual contributor or to the author. End notes. 1. Two independent agencies The Office of the Director of National Intelligence, ODNI, and the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA. 9. Department of Defense Elements The Defense Intelligence Agency, DIA, the National Security Agency, NSA, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, NA, the National Reconnaissance Office, NRO, and intelligence elements of the five DOD services, the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, and Space Force. 7. Elements of other departments and agencies The Department of Energy's Office of Intelligence and Counterintelligence, the Department of Homeland Security's Office of Intelligence and Analysis and U.S. Coast Guard Intelligence, the Department of Justice's Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Drug Enforcement Agency's Office of National Security Intelligence, the Department of State's Bureau of Intelligence and Research, and the Department of the Treasury's Office of Intelligence and Analysis. Office of the Director of National Intelligence, What We Do, Members of the IC, https www.dni.gov index.php slash what we do slash members of the IC, accessed March 8, 2023. To Office of the Director of National Intelligence, Mission, https slash slash www.intelligence.gov slash mission number colon text equals the percent 20 intelligence percent 20 community s percent 20 mission percent 20 is law percent 20 enforcement percent 2 c percent 20 and percent 20 the percent 20 military accessed february 24 2023 3 abraham lincoln second annual message to congress december 1 1862 https slash slash www.presidency.uxieb.edu slash documents slash second annual message 9 Accessed March 6, 2023. For Christopher Porter, seven questions the next president will need the intelligence community to answer to win the technology competition with China, LinkedIn, March 14, 2023, https slash slash www.linkedin.com slash pulse slash seven questions next president need intelligence community porter slash tracking ID equals DL9 RF5 and SWNA 7 R9 geek percent 3D percent 3D, accessed March 18, 2023. 5 H.R. 2845, Intelligence Reform and Terrorism Prevention Act of 2004, Public Law No. 108-458, 108th Congress, December 17, 2004, https slash slash www.congress.gov slash 108 slash plus slash publ 458 slash plaw 108 publ 458.pdf, accessed March 6, 2004. 6 Testimony of Philip Zalikow, Executive Director. National Commission on Terrorist Attacks upon the United States, in hearing, Assessing America's Counterterrorism's Capabilities, Committee on Governmental Affairs, U.S. Senate, 108th Congress, 2D Session, August 3, 2004, p. 55, 
https slash slash ia eight zero two nine zero six dot us dot archive dot org slash thirty one slash item slash government gpo dot fdsys dot chrg one oh eight shrg nine five five zero six slash chrg one oh eight shrg nine five five zero six dot pdf accessed march nineteenth twenty twenty three seven michael allen blinking red crisis and compromise in american intelligence after nine eleventh dulles va potomac books two thousand and thirteen p one hundred and fifty five Interview with Robert Gates, April 19, 2012. 8. Allen, Blinking Red, P154, Robert Gates' email to Andy Card, January 11, 2005, handwritten note from Robert Gates, January 20, 2005. 9. Interview with John Ratcliffe, December 15, 2022. 10. Ibid. 11. Ibid. 12. S258, National Security Act of 1947, Public Law No. 80-253, 80th Congress, July 26, 1947, https//govtrackis.s3.amazonas.com slash legislink slash pdf slash stat slash 61 slash statute 61 pg 495.pdf, accessed March 6, 2023. 13. President Ronald Reagan, Executive Order 12333, United States Intelligence Activities, December 4, 1981, in Federal Register, Volume 46, Number 235, December 8, 1981, pages 59,941, 59,954, https slash slash www.govinfo.gov slash content slash package slash fr 1981-12-08 slash pdf slash fr 1981-12-08.pdf, accessed March 6, 2023. 14. President George W. Bush, Executive Order 13,470, Further Amendments to Executive Order 12,333, United States Intelligence Activities, July 30, 2008, in Federal Register, Volume 73, Number 150, August 4, 2008, pages 45,325,342.http//www.govinfo.gov//content//package//fr2008-08-04/pdf//e8-17940.pdf, accessed March 6, 2023. See also President George W. Bush, Executive Order 13355, Strengthened Management of the Intelligence Community, August 27, 2004, in Federal Register, Volume 69, Number 169, September 1, 2004, pages 53593-53597, https slash slash www.govinfo.gov slash content slash package slash fr 2004-09-01 slash pdf slash 04-20051.pdf, accessed March 6, 2023. 15 U.S. Department of Defense, Defense Counterintelligence and Security Agency, Trusted Workforce 2.0 and Continuous Vetting, https slash slash www.xa.mil slash mc slash pv slash cv slash, accessed March 9, 2023. 1650 U.S. Code 3093. HTTPS slash slash www.law.cornell.edu slash s code slash text slash 50 slash 3093, accessed February 24th, 2023. 1750 U.S. Code 3093, A. 1850 U.S. Code 3093, A. 4. 19 Michael E. Devine, Covered Action and Clandestine Activities of the Intelligence Community, Selected Definitions, Congressional Research Service Report for Members and Committees of Congress No. R45175, Updated November 29, 2022, https slash slash sgp.fos.org slash crs slash intel slash r45175.pdf, accessed February 24, 2023. 20HR 2663, Central Intelligence Agency Act of 1949, Public Law No. 81-110, 81st Congress, June 20, 1949. HTTPS slash slash govtrackis.s3 dot amazonas dot com slash legislink slash pdf slash stat slash sixty three slash statute sixty three pg two oh eight dot pdf accessed march sixth, twenty twenty three. Twenty one Nicole O. Grayco, Intelligence Community Workforce is more diverse, but still struggles with retention and promotion, Federal News Network, october twenty seventh, twenty twenty one. HTTPS slash slash federalnewsnetwork.com slash workforce slash 2021 slash 10 slash intelligence community workforce is more diverse but still struggles with retention and promotion slash accessed March 18, 2023. 22 C. James J. Wirtz, The Intelligence Policy Nexus, in Locke K. Johnson, ed., Strategic Intelligence, Volume 1, Understanding the Hidden Side of Government, Westport, CT, 
Prager, 2007, and Richard K. Betts, Analysis, War, and Decision, Why Intelligence Failures Are Inevitable, World Politics, Volume 30, Number 1, October 1978, pages 6189. 23 Letter from Barry A. Zulauf, IC Analytic Ombudsman, Office of the Director of National Intelligence, to Senator Marco Rubio, Acting Chairman, and Senator Mark Warner, Vice Chairman, Select Committee on Intelligence, U.S. Senate, RE, SSCI No. 2020-3029, January 6, 2021. HTTPS slash slash int.nyt.com slash data slash document tools slash IC Ombudsman election interference with responses slash C50E5480111 FD 6168 slash full.pdf, accessed March 14, 2023. 24 Joshua Rovner, Fixing the Facts, National Security and the Politics of Intelligence, Ithaca, New York, Cornell University Press, 2011, pages 3031. 25 Joshua Rovner, Is Politicization Ever a Good Thing? Intelligence and National Security, Volume 28, No. 1, 2013, p. 58. 26 S. 1566, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act of 1978, Public Law No. 95 511, 95th Congress, October 25, 1978, https www.govinfo.gov slash content slash package slash statute 92 slash pdf slash statute 92 pg 1783.pdf Accessed March 6, 2023. 27 The Cipher Brief, 702 Reauthorization, Defending a Key Intelligence Tool, Remarks of Benjamin Powell, Former General Counsel to the Director of National Intelligence, stating that FISA 702 provides between 40 and 60 percent of the intelligence in the PDB, December 18, 2017, https slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch, v equals mrj 9 ghvrfk and a underscore channel equals the Cipher Brief. Accessed March 18, 2023. 28 An intelligence alliance that includes Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Office of the Director of National Intelligence, National Counterintelligence and Security Center, Five Eyes Intelligence Oversight and Review Council, Fjork, https slash slash www.dni.gov slash index.php slash ncsc how we work slash 217 about slash organization slash ISIC pages slash 2660 ISIC Fjork. Accessed March 10, 2023. 29 Porter, 7 questions the next president will need the intelligence community to answer to win the technology competition with China. 30 HR 1591, an act to require the registration of certain persons employed by agencies to disseminate propaganda in the United States and for other purposes, Public Law No. 75-583, 75th Congress, June 8, 1938. HTTPS slash slash govtrackus.s3 dot amazonas.com slash legislink slash pdf slash stat slash fifty two slash statute fifty two pg six thirty one dot pdf accessed march sixth, twenty twenty three. Thirty one Christina Wong, exclusive, former DNI John Ratcliffe pleased CIA following his lead on China threat, Breitbart, october thirteenth, twenty twenty one. HTTPS slash slash www.breitbart.com slash politics slash 2021 slash 10 slash 13 slash exclusive John Ratcliffe pleased CIA following lead China threat slash accessed March 11, 2023. 32 HR 4628, Intelligence Authorization Act for Fiscal Year 2003, Public Law No. 107 to 306, 107th Congress, November 27, 2002, Title IX. HTTPS slash slash www.govinfo.gov slash content slash package slash statute 116 slash pdf slash statute 116 pg 2383.pdf, accessed March 6, 2023. 33 President George W. Bush, Executive Order 13354, National Counterterrorism Center, August 27, 2004, in Federal Register, Volume 69, Number 169. September 1, 2004, pages 53589-53592, https slash slash www.govinfo.gov slash content slash package slash fr 2004-09-01 slash pdf slash 04-20050.pdf, accessed March 6, 2023. 34 Office of the Director of National Intelligence, National Counterintelligence and Security Center, who we are, History of NCSC. HTTPS slash slash www.dni.gov slash index.php slash ncsc who we are slash ncsc history, accessed March 11, 2023. 35 Gregory F. Treverton and C. Brian Gabbard, Assessing the Tradecraft of Intelligence Analysis, Rand Corporation, National Security Research Division Technical Report, 2008, P6, 
https slash slash www.rand.org slash pub slash technical underscore reports slash tr 293html accessed March 1, 2023. 36 Letter from Barry A. Zulauf, IC Analytic Ombudsman, Office of the Director of National Intelligence, to Senator Marco Rubio, Acting Chairman, and Senator Mark Warner, Vice Chairman, Select Committee on Intelligence, U.S. Senate, RE, SSCI No. 2020-3029, January 6, 2021. HTTPS slash slash int.nyt.com slash data slash document tools slash IC Ombudsman election interference with responses slash C50E5480111 FD 6168 slash full.pdf, accessed March 6, 2023. 37 Independent IC Analytic Ombudsman's Report on Politicization of Intelligence, attached to January 6, 2021, Zulauf Letter. 38 President Barack Obama, Executive Order 13526, Classified National Security Information, December 29, 2009, in Federal Register, Volume 75, Number 2, January 5, 2010, pages 700 and 7731, https slash slash www.govinfo.gov slash content slash package slash fr 2010-01-05 slash pdf slash e9-31418.pdf, accessed March 7, 2023. 39 President Barack Obama, Executive Order 13556, Controlled Classified Information, November 4, 2010, in Federal Register, Volume 75, Number 216, November 9, 2010, pages 68,600 and 75, 68,677, https slash slash www.govinfo.gov slash content slash package slash fr 2010-11-09 slash pdf slash 2010-28360.pdf, accessed March 7, 2023. 40 Agath Demare, How the U.S.-Chinese Technology War is Changing the World, Foreign Policy, November 19, 2022, https slash slash foreignpolicy.com slash 2022 slash 11 slash 19 slash Demare Backfire Sanctions Us China Technology War Semiconductors Export Controls Bidden slash, accessed February 28, 2023. 41 Scott Stewart, The Risk to Undercover Operatives in the Digital Age, Strit 4 Worldview, October 29, 2015. HTTPS slash slash worldview.strit4.com slash article slash risk undercover operatives digital age, accessed February 24, 2023. 42 Lauren Petruzello, Human Intelligence, former CIA officer talks about espionage in the digital age, University of Delaware U Daily, March 22, 2012, HTTPS slash slash www.idle.edu slash U Daily slash 2012 slash Mars slash global agenda greenier 032212.html accessed February 24, 2023. 43 Jenna McLaughlin and Zach Dorfman, Shattered, Inside the Secret Battle to Save America's Undercover Spies in the Digital Age, Yahoo News, December 30, 2019, https slash slash news.yahoo.com slash Shattered Inside the Secret Battle to Save America's Undercover Spies in the Digital Age 100029026.html, accessed February 24, 2023. 44 U.S. Federal Trade Commission, U.S. Safe Harbor Framework, https slash slash www.fdc.gov slash business guidance slash privacy security slash ucu safe harbor framework accessed march 11, 2023 45 fact sheet overview of the eu us privacy shield network us department of commerce https slash slash 2014-2017.commerce.gov slash site slash commerce.gov slash file slash media slash file slash 2016 slash us underscore privacy underscore shield underscore fact underscore sheet dot pdf Accessed March 11, 2023. 46 Fact Sheet, United States and European Commission Announced Transatlantic Data Privacy Framework, The White House, March 25, 2022, https slash slash www.whitehouse.gov slash briefing room slash statements releases slash 2022 slash 03 slash 25 slash fact sheet United States and European Commission Announced Transatlantic Data Privacy Framework slash, accessed March 11, 2023. 47 President Joseph R. Biden Jr. Executive Order 14086, Enhancing Safeguards for United States Signals Intelligence Activities, October 7, 2022, in Federal Register, Volume 87, Number 198, October 14, 2022, pages 62,283, 62,297, accessed March 7, 2023. 48 War and Peace Trouble, Release of Ukraine Intelligence Represents New Front in U.S. Information War with Russia, The Wall Street Journal. Updated April 4, 2022, 
https slash slash www.wsj.com slash article slash release of secrets represents new front in US information war with Russia 11649070001, accessed February 24, 2023. 49 President Joseph R. Biden Jr., National Security Memorandum on Promoting United States Leadership in Quantum Computing While Mitigating Risks to Vulnerable Cryptographic Systems, The White House, May 4, 2022. HTTPS slash slash www.whitehouse.gov slash briefing room slash statements releases slash 2022 slash 05 slash 04 slash national security memorandum on promoting United States leadership in quantum computing while mitigating risks to vulnerable cryptographic systems slash number colon text equals to percent 20 mitigate percent 20 this percent 20 risk percent 2 C percent 20 the percent 20 United percent 20 states percent 20 must the percent 20 quantum percent 20 risk percent 20 as percent 20 is percent 20 feasible percent 20 by percent 202035 accessed march 12th 2023 see also president joseph r Biden jr executive order 14073 enhancing the national quantum initiative advisory committee may 4th 2022 in federal register volume 87 number 89 May 9, 2022, pages 27,900 and 927,911, https slash slash www.govinfo.gov slash content slash package slash fr 2022-05-09 slash pdf slash 2022-10076.pdf, accessed March 12, 2023, and fact sheet, President Biden announces two presidential directives advancing quantum technologies, the White House, May 4, 2022. HTTPS slash slash www.whitehouse.gov slash briefing room slash statements releases slash 2022 slash 05 slash 04 slash fact sheet President Biden announces two presidential directives advancing quantum technologies slash accessed March 12, 2023. 8. Media Agencies. U.S. Agency for Global Media. Moran Namdar. Mission Statement. The mission of United States Agency for Global Media, USM is to inform, engage, and connect people around the world in support of freedom and democracy. One however, this mission statement does not reflect the current work of the agency. The mission is noble, but the execution is lacking. To fulfill its mission, USM should also aim to present the truth about America and American policy not parrot America's adversaries' propaganda and talking points. Point 2. Overview. Originally formed as the Broadcasting Board of Governors, BBG, in 1994, the BBG changed its name in 2018 to the United States Agency for Global Media. The USM is a sub-cabinet agency of the U.S. government with a budget of just under $1 billion. The agency oversees two government broadcasting networks, the Voice of America, VOA, and the Office of Cuba Broadcasting, OCB. USM also oversees 100% of the grant funding for several independent grantee organizations, including the Middle East Broadcasting Network, MBN, Radio Free Asia, RFA, Radio Free Europe slash Radio Liberty. RFE slash RL, and the newly formed Open Technology Fund, OTF. Point 3. L. The Voice of America provides news and information in 48 languages to a weekly audience of more than 326 million people worldwide. For more than 80 years, VOA journalists have supplied news and information about the U.S., audience specific regions of interest and concern, and the world at large. VOA radio and television signals are broadcast to approximately 3,500 affiliates and satellite transmissions reach countries where free speech is banned or where civil society is under threat. Point 4. VOA uses digital, web, and mobile media as well, which, while sometimes useful in propagating valuable information globally, has created specific violations of the agency's prohibition against broadcasting to the domestic U.S. audience particularly with regard to flagrantly political content, as has been the practice with recent and current VOA content directors and managers. Point 5. The network once had a generally well-received brand value, but it has deteriorated under decades of poor leadership and a loss of its once-priced unbiased reporting. There are bright spots within VOA, but mismanagement and declining production values have diluted its once great reputation as a singular voice in American news broadcasting abroad. L. The Office of Cuba Broadcasting oversees radio and television Marty, a multimedia hub of news, information and analysis that provides the people of Cuba with programs through satellite television, radio, and digital media. These programs present news and information about Cuba's oppressive government from the outside world that would otherwise be heavily restricted. Point six, the OCB remains a critical avenue of truth to the Cuban people but has been threatened with crippling budget and operational constraints, including empathetic attitudes toward communist Cuban leadership coupled with organizational hostility toward the OCB by certain elements of USM leadership. During the Biden administration, the OCB has been threatened with closure, while also suffering chilling reductions in force. Point seven. L. The Middle East Broadcasting Network is an Arabic-language news organization with a weekly audience of 27.4 million people in 22 countries in the Middle East and North Africa. 
The MBN consists of two television networks, radio, websites, and social media platforms. Together, they deliver news and analysis on the region, American policies, and Americana. The MBN has correspondence throughout the Middle East and North Africa. Point eight. L Radio Free Europe slash Radio Liberty is a private, non-profit, multimedia broadcasting corporation that serves as a surrogate media source in 27 languages and 23 countries, including Afghanistan, Iran, Pakistan, Russia, and Ukraine. Founded in the early days of the Cold War, Radio Free Europe in 1949 and Radio Liberty in 1953, and merged in 1976, Radio Free Europe and Radio Liberty were intended to execute edgy and daring information operations and unrestricted news reporting deep behind the Iron Curtain. Unfortunately, like other broadcast organizations under USIM, RFE slash RL has surrendered much of its rich history to an approach that favors political trends as opposed to operations that support and represent America abroad. While there are some bright spots within RFE slash RL, much of the network has redundant programming with certain VOA language services, often with competing, counterproductive, or dissimilar messaging. The recent addition of RFE slash RL's Hungarian language service, Sabbat Europa, falls outside the intended scope of RFE slash RL's charter by targeting a democratically elected, pro-American European and NATO ally. Not least, RFE slash RL has been plagued by several serious espionage-related security risks within its ranks. Point nine. L Radio Free Asia is a private, non-profit multimedia news corporation that brings news and uncensored content to people in six Asian countries that restrict free speech, freedom of the press, and access to reliable information. RFA also provides educational and cultural programming, as well as forums for audiences to engage in open dialogue and freely express opinions. RFA utilizes on-the-ground reporters and networks of in-country sources, citizen journalists, and eyewitnesses who provide leads, tips, images, and video. Point 10. Several reports from the Office of the Inspector General, OIG, were released showing waste and self-dealing, including security vulnerabilities and RFA leadership. Awarding insiders millions of dollars of grant funding. Point 11 For example, as the OIG stated in one report, the then-president of RFA established the Freedom to Connect. Foundation, Foundation and thereafter awarded two contracts, totaling $1.20 million to the foundation she herself founded. Point 12 Furthermore, the OIG found that RFA did not comply with federal procurement requirements for grantees. OIG identified instances in which RFA and its agents did not comply with OMB Office of Management and Budget Conflict of Interest procurement requirements for grantees. Specifically, OIG found that RFA entered into 14 contracts, totaling $4.0 million, 51% of the amount of OTF FIS 2012 and 2013 project-related contracts, with organizations that had some affiliation with either RFA officials or members of OTF Advisory Council. Point 13. This same leadership proceeded to wastefully form the Open Technology Fund as its own independent grantee with the help of USM senior management prior to the tenure of Trump-appointed leadership. L. The Open Technology Fund's goal is to provide funding to support the research, development, and implementation of Internet freedom technologies that circumvent censorship. OTF was formed under dubious circumstances by using consolidation rules to usurp the mission and funding of USIM's pre-existing Office of Internet Freedom, OIF, which funded far more diverse technologies with much greater transparency. OTF, however, operates with far less transparency and strictly restricts funding to open-source technology. OTF does not support any technology with even partially closed source code, notwithstanding that such closed source code would provide more protection against hacking. Although OTF touts large user numbers, this could not be substantiated upon requests for information, and it was discovered by former senior USM leadership that OTF makes extremely small, insubstantial donations to much larger messaging applications and technology to bolster its unsubstantiated claims. Point 14 Despite its vibrant self-lobbying and publicity efforts, OTF remains a wasteful and redundant boondoggle. Its grantee status was suspended by Trump-appointed USM leadership for a number of reasons, including non-compliance with its grant terms and for actions that resulted in several fraud and waste investigations. Point 15. The OIF which predates OTF, was historically under USIM's Office of Chief Strategy Officer and for years had been performing the same tasks as OTF within USIM headquarters for the benefit of all USIM broadcast networks. With much greater transparency, OIF succeeded with fewer staff while simultaneously fielding more diverse and robust technologies. Absent a meaningful organizational impact analysis to justify the wastefulness of the decision-making process, OTF usurped the entire OIF budget and was set up as a new grantee organization. Exacerbating matters, OIF was shut down in order to provide massive grants to the opaque activities of OTF and its founding leadership, who went on a free-spending boondoggle for high-end Washington, D.C., office space, furnishings, and top salaries for its leadership team. Numerous career staff whistleblowers came forward to sound the alarm about OTF to Trump-appointed leadership, citing concerns about the OIG reports, wasteful spending, and other substantive performance matters. Point 16 Nonetheless, they 
Biden administration reinstated OTF to full operational status and ceased all investigations immediately after assuming office. Attempts at reform. Late in the Trump administration, following the long-delayed Senate confirmation of Michael Pack as USM Chief Executive Officer, CEO, 17 agency leadership rapidly initiated long overdue and necessary reforms 18 including security reforms repeatedly requested by the Office of Personnel Management, OPM, and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, ODNI, that had been ignored by USM leadership. Point 19 Unfortunately, as was the case with the OTF, the Biden administration immediately reinstated personnel who had been fired for gross security violations, placing the agency back into its previously failed posture one that poses a danger to national security. The Firewall Saga the vital error in USM's current organizational-slash-cultural calculus is the agency's selective application of a journalistic firewall. The amorphous interpretation of a firewall shifts, depending on which administration is in office and who is asking questions. Although a firewall should ensure journalistic independence, it has been used without formal regulation for decades in order to shirk legitimate oversight of everything from promoting adversaries' propaganda to ignoring journalistic safety. Often, the firewall is touted when journalists are either promoting anti-American propaganda that parrots adversarial regime talking points or promoting politically biased viewpoints in opposition to the VOA Charter. Point 20. Such weak oversight, alien to any other large media network or news organization. Particularly one derivative of U.S. foreign policy and national security goals was erroneously enshrined in a document known as the Firewall Regulation. 21 The Firewall Regulation was entered into the Federal Register on the eve of the Senate confirmation of President Donald Trump's USM CEO, Michael Pack. It was the quintessential midnight reg designed to throttle the statutory and executive authority of the agency head. It stipulated that agency management, by standards unknown to most large broadcast companies, was forbidden from engaging in oversight and direction of content in any way even false content. It ran counter to the law, including the smith mont Act 22 and it was harmful to the agency itself and to the foreign policy and national security goals of the U.S. government. Even content that went well beyond fair and accurate reporting on U.S. domestic and political problems could not be reined in by front office leadership under the firewall regulation. Soon, VOA's White House correspondent was posting content highly critical of, and personally insulting to, the U.S. president in contradiction of VOA's own journalistic standards, policies, and procedures. USM career officials considered such content sacrosanct and bravely independent journalistic content protected by the spirit of the firewall regulation despite ample evidence. To the contrary, Late in the Trump administration, USM political leadership, following an intensive U.S. Department of Justice review, revoked the firewall regulation over the protests of journalistic organizations none more vociferous than VOA itself. Point 23 While the abuses of the firewall regulation are particularly disconcerting, they encompass just a fraction of similar overreaches of the agency's journalistic mission. Current and former USM slash VOA leadership who wanted to maintain virtually zero accountability and oversight waged a campaign of interference, resistance, and disinformation to stifle change at the agency. Perhaps not coincidentally, various media outlets with relationships to former and future USM leadership published near-daily criticisms of Trump administration appointees and also of grantee organization. Leaders who were appointed by CEO PAC to implement long overdue reforms. Point 24. Agency Mission Failure Currently, the USM, by and large, is not fulfilling its mission, which remains so ill-defined and ambiguous that it enables the organization to go about its business largely unguided with little to no oversight. Rather than providing news and information in an accurate, reliable way that promotes and supports freedom and democracy, the agency is mismanaged, disorganized, ineffective, and rife with waste and redundancy. These shortfalls are either oriented toward, or directly contribute to, the agency's media organizations joining the mainstream media's anti-U.S. chorus and denigrating the American story all in the name of so-called journalistic independence. Indeed, content during the Trump administration was rife with typical mainstream media talking points assailing the president and his staff. The few bright spots within VOA and the OCB are often stifled instead of supported. Top-level talent often leaves the agency or is met with obstacles rather than support. Point 25 Opportunities for modernization and effective strategy are ignored, and wasteful spending and misallocation of resources are the norm in an environment in which nepotism is rampant and political gamesmanship protects bad actors. Amanda Bennett 26 was confirmed as USM CEO in 2022 after two years of being blocked by several members of Congress. Legal advocacy organization America First Legal Foundation even wrote to President Joe Biden asking him to withdraw her nomination 27 citing several severe national security failures while she was director of VOA. 28 Her tenure as director during the Obama administration, and her holdover into the beginning of the Trump administration, was marred with operational failures, security failures, and credibility failures. Those failures are reportedly ongoing during her current tenure as CEO. 29 Necessary Reforms Security Issues the Office of Personnel Management 30 and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence flagged severe security failures during four extensive investigations of the USM, 
each conducted during a 10-year period between 2010 and 2020.31 security personnel and former agency senior leadership ignored these issues and allowed them to persist.32. In brief, the USM is vulnerable to exploitation by foreign spies. During the last six months of the Trump administration, known foreign intelligence operatives were removed from the OCB and RFE slash RL. During the 10-year period between 2010 and 2020, both the OPM and the ODNI found that the USM's Office of Security, under the Office of Management, had grossly ignored and flouted many of the federal government's most critical and long-standing information and personnel. Security Protocols, Regulations, and Practices.33 During the investigative period in which the findings were largely, if not wholly, ignored by agency senior leadership over 1,500 USM personnel, nearly 40% of its total workforce, were performing their Tier 3 and Tier 5 national security-sensitive positions with falsified and slash or unauthorized suitability for employment determinations and with access to sensitive federal buildings and information systems. In many cases, records, including social security numbers, were falsified or replaced with notional placeholders, and fingerprints, in many dozens of cases, were never submitted to the Federal Bureau of Investigation for basic background investigations. By the time these issues were addressed by members of the Trump administration, more than 500 personnel with unauthorized access and clearances had left the USM and rolled into other federal agencies with reciprocal clearance authorizations. Many others disappeared into U.S. society. As of January 2021, the USM had not yet determined the whereabouts of these individuals.34. The USM must never again be entrusted with delegated authority over its personnel security programs and suitability determinations until such time as it can prove that these failures will not happen again. These responsibilities must remain with the Department of Defense and the Office of Personnel Management to which they were transferred in the final weeks of the Trump administration. Journalist Security Agency journalists, both on and off American soil, have faced danger 35 yet their superiors have done little to protect them. Whistleblowers and Trump administration officials found that protection of USM American and foreign journalists employed by USM networks and grantee organizations was severely lacking. Against often significant resistance, political appointees forced action to enable broadcasters, who were under verified threats, to broadcast from remote locations while being protected by federal law enforcement officers. Likewise, political appointees met resistance from senior career officials when insisting that foreign-based journalists in high-risk countries make their locations known to the agency in the event they required rescue, extraction, or safe housing. Such safety measures, argued career officials, would somehow represent a violation of journalistic independence. With only rare exceptions, resistance to the most basic journalist safety measures was the knee-jerk response from USM career officials. Wasting taxpayer dollars. The USM's current operations, properly managed, can be conducted on less than $700 million per year. Prior to the arrival of President Donald Trump's appointees in June 2020, budgeting, financial responsibility, and spending totaled over $800 million per year, with virtually no oversight or supervision. Waste, unnecessary spending, nepotism for pet projects, redundant programs, and unnecessary hiring abounded. Consolidation and reduction of redundant services. Currently, the USM funds numerous redundant services through its own offices, through Voice of America and the Office of Cuba Broadcasting, and through its grantees. For example, VOA has a Mandarin language service but also funds redundant services through Radio Free Asia. VOA also has a Farsi language service that duplicates one funded through Radio Free Europe slash Radio Liberty. Surplus services in the same languages are often unnecessary and counterproductive. Fiscal responsibility and transparency should return to the USM, with consolidation being a cornerstone of the strategy. As noted previously, the Open Technology Fund duplicates activities that already existed at the USM in the Office of Internet Freedom. Numerous career whistleblowers came forward to sound the alarm to President Trump's USM political team about OTF's abuse and overreach.36 Its opaque, expensive, and unnecessary usurpation of an existing USM office is an egregious example of government waste and illustrates the general disdain for U.S. taxpayers that is rife within this agency. Full reinstatement of OIF would allow full agency and congressional oversight into how so-called internet freedom money is being spent.37 J-1 visa program abuses Rather than use the appropriate IVISA 38 intended for foreign journalists, the USM uses the J-1 cultural exchange visas to allow foreign nationals to transition easily into jobs that American citizens with cultural and linguistic expertise could satisfy. The J-1 visa is intended for cultural and academic exchange programs, among others none of which include journalism.39 Additionally, J-1 visas are meant for non-immigrant temporary exchanges. The USM's J-1 visa holders often go on to apply for permanent residency, which violates the intention of this visa. Shortwave transmission upgrades and improvements. Non-web-based technologies that are proven and durable, such as shortwave radio transmission stations, have been grossly demphasized in budgeting in favor of newer web-based technologies. 
This move is dangerously short-sighted and puts the US at a perilous strategic disadvantage in the event of a major conflict, particularly with Russia or China. There is great concern about the vulnerability of undersea cable trunks that make up the Internet cloud. The vast majority of global Internet traffic 95% is transmitted through these cables, including news transmissions and web-based content produced by the USAMS broadcast networks. While the robust and popular use of the Internet is ideal during peacetime, during times of major conflict, widespread damage to the undersea cables that carry communications across the globe can reasonably be expected. Long-lasting power outages are also likely, such as those Ukraine experienced in the aftermath of Russia's 2022 invasion. The USAMS responsibility for the only US global shortwave radio capability is of critical strategic importance if America is to carry its message to people seeking information and freedom within conflict zones. Shortwave technologies also make it possible to carry broadcasts in areas where internet traffic is severely restricted, as it is in many authoritarian states today. Organizational Issues Personnel Personnel is one of the biggest concerns for the USAM and its grantees. Attracting talented staff who will stay and letting go of poorly performing. Personnel are hurdles. Additionally, whistleblowers have come forward with numerous credible allegations of illegal nepotism and improper hiring practices. Forty past agency leaders have ignored national security procedures when hiring and have failed to adequately vet staff. Point 41 Government hiring policies and federal law must be followed, and serious policy changes must be implemented to end these practices. Relevant Government Entities L. The White House As an executive branch agency, the USAM ostensibly should report to the President and coordinate activities with the National Security Council, NSC especially given the direct and implied national security aspects of the agency's messaging globally. However, there currently is no specific office in the White House or NSC liaison for the USAM. The original network, VOA, functioned under the Office of Coordinator of Information as early as 1941, the War Department's Office of War Information from 1942 to 1945, the State Department from 1945 to 1953, and the U.S. Information Agency from 1953 until the creation of the Independent Broadcasting Board of Governors in 1999. Although some oversight and management functions of the agency are provided by the State Department, the USAM otherwise has little connectivity to larger departments or agencies and even less to the White House. With the dissolution of the U.S. Information Agency in 1999, the USAM has virtually been under its own supervision and guidance. The results have been dismal. L. The State Department VOA was most effective before and during the Cold War when it was under the direct supervision and control of the War and State Departments, respectively. If VOA is not put in the direct chain of command under the NSC, serious consideration should be given to putting VOA under the direct supervision of the Office of Global Public Affairs at the Department of State. The Office of Global Public Affairs was formed during the Trump administration by consolidation of the State Department's Bureau of International Information Programs and Bureau of Global Public Affairs. Ensuring that taxpayer-funded TV, radio, and messaging tells America's story is imperative and should be coordinated with the existing foreign language social media platforms at the State Department. Currently, VOA's foreign language TV programming is unreliable in telling America's story, given its amorphous interpretation of its independence firewall and its waning adherence to certain provisions of the smith mont Act depending on which political party is in office. The VOA firewall is meant to protect broadcasters from government interference with content, however, USAM staff have abused the firewall and used it as an offensive